Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Franchi Pierce, and welcome again to my channel. It is Friday. Happy Friday, November 1st of 2024, 7.43 in the p.m. How are you? Hope you guys have a blessed evening. This is arguably, I guess in the top five, Trump's notable nemesis. I present to you Liz Cheney. She is the daughter of former president Dick Cheney. Well, today, Mr. Trump says some things that arguably are disgraceful about this woman and how she should go out to battle. And if she had to, she wouldn't be the war hawk that he believes that she is. But the way that he said it, he, he shouldn't have did that. Not only did it give Nancy Pelosi and Kamala Harris something to run on, it gave people like me pause like, man, here you go again. It reminds me of why I got to push you. Because atmosphere is everything. I'm big on atmosphere. I'm big on keeping the peace. And no matter how much she's made you mad in the past, and no matter what she say, don't you fall for the bait. And don't you start no stuff. And certainly don't give them ammunition. Put in the comment section if you know what I'm trying to say. You know Trump, he got a little hard head. And he'll go after you in a minute, especially if you, if you say something to him or he want to beat you to the punch. The point I do believe he was making is that, look, her dad, and he did mention her dad, he made a lot of money back in the day. That is the company he was associated with is called Hall Halliburton. And I'll explain that in a minute. Trump mentioned that. And basically what he's just saying is what he's saying is that she's just like him. But again, it's the way you say it. But what I want to get in not only talking about that is we only got X amount of days left. Somebody got to go to Trump and say, look. And he was with Tucker Carlson when he said it. Tucker Carlson got to learn to reel him in. I'm just keeping it real. If this is the last president or if this is the last hurrah for us to try to move our country back in the right direction, then we need Trump to learn how to just chill out and be cool about his rhetoric. I think that's the best way for me to put it. Now, let me hasten on. We got former vice president. And a lot of people say, historians say, he was the most powerful, influential vice president of our lifetime, if not ever. And some people believe that he was running rings around George Bush because of all the money that Hal Burton was making off of the Iraqi war. If you're my age, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. That was a big, people thought it was a big conflict of interest back in the day. He was out of, if I'm not mistaken, he was out of Hal Burton when he became vice president. But they gave him a hefty amount of money when he left. And I'm going to tie all that in. It's going to blow your mind. Now, a war hawk, this is what, this is what Trump called her. A war hawk is a person who advocates for war or an aggressive foreign policy and prefers armed conflict over nonviolence methods to solve problems. And of course, he was referring to not only her, but her dad as well. So let me give you some context. Now here's, did I say Chris Tucker? I apologize. I always call him Chris Tucker. Tucker Carlson. He got to start reeling Trump in. He's with him a lot lately, him and Elon Musk. He got to reel him in. And I'm putting anybody who's close to Trump, including Christians and pastors, 
You got to talk to him. Because look, if we get him up in there, you know who you're fighting, allegedly. The media. And they can't wait for you to come out and say something that they can use as a dart. And when you talk about them getting a hold of the information that he put out there, which I don't, I can't put out there now, about what he said about her being on the battlefield. You don't need that atmosphere because you got crazies out here that can now go after him. That's what I'm trying to say, y'all. Now listen to his response about Liz Cheney, just talking about her period, okay? <laughs> Something must be wrong with him if he thinks that that's okay. And if he thinks that there is a, a market for such language, that he's really doing an injustice to the American people and frankly insulting the intelligence of his own supporters. They don't want people having guns pointed to the faces of... See? <laughs> you can imagine what she was about to say. Trump said something stupid. I, look... I put in my last video, so I got to say it, call it, it was stupid. This is probably his number one nemesis, Fancy Nancy. Remember how she tore up his uh, State of the Union document back in the day? And uh, he gave her some ammunition. This is the number one campaign finance raiser for the Democratic Party. Did y'all know that? Last time I checked, she's number one. That's the main reason I believe she came back. And if something happens in the future, then I know a reason why she came back. That is a lot of commotion later on if he gets up in there. This woman is not, this woman got a lot of power. And believe it or not, even though Trump was president before, the inner circle of the White House, Trump is outnumbered. Pelosi been around forever. Chuck Schumer been around forever. These are fossils, y'all. Trump's still getting his beard wet. You understand what I'm saying? Four years in the White House. Four years of no political history. Coming around these vultures. Guess what, Trump? This is what you're around. Forget about the war. You're around the Hawks. Somebody got to pull his collar and tell him who he's around. These are ancient, that is historical, well-financed, fine-tuned, politically savvy, Nationally and international. Trump, you can't win on that level. Please, anybody around him, teach him. Please teach him. If anybody understand what I'm saying, put in the comment section. Four years as a president is nothing. Joe had, what, 36 years as a senator. Eight years as VP. She been around, I think, for about 40 years. Jeffrey's been around for a while. Schumer been around for, oh my God, 30-some years. People, somebody get a, get a hold of Trump and let him know. When you do battle, you got to be wise. These are old school, set you up, slip you up on the banana. And I think I said that in the video, either this week or the week before, that they can show him tricks up their sleeve that he ain't seen in his last four years, in his last term. You feel me? So he got to concentrate, stay focused on what you're doing. And you know the media is not with you, Trump. So just be cool. So that's her response. Now here's Harris' response. This must be disqualifying. Anyone who wants to be president of the United States who uses that kind of violent rhetoric is clearly 
disqualified and unqualified to be president. Trump shot back during a stop in Michigan. If she had to do it herself and she had to... See, I'm not going to go there. Because I forgot what it said, but I'm not going to go there. People, when you listen to the... I'll put both of these... I'll put this video in the... Um, in the, uh, in the description. But all you gotta do is type in on YouTube, uh, Trump and Liz Cheney and what he said. Just put in Trump and Liz Cheney, it'll come up. It's not good to say that. And Trump, let's keep it real. That's a woman. Come on, bro. Somebody get a hold of this dude. He gotta stop. No disrespect, shouldn't have called him dude, but hey. Mr. President, please, please stop. And anybody around him, stop tolerating it. If we want the Lord to bless, we got to be cool. If you want to, if you, if you don't want, uh, how would you say? They they go already. They go they're, already. They got plans for him. If you, if you get up in there, they're gonna try to. They're gonna try to give him a war a wrecked economy, you name it, he gonna walk into a living hell. You feel me? So he gotta stay focused. You got three more days, stop stop that type of rhetoric. Now check this out. Chris, this, is, this, this article is from way back in the day. Baby, look at this. This is May 24th of 2010. Chris Matthews says Cheney got $34 million payday from Halliburton. The vice president, when he left Halliburton, he got a check for $34 million. The oil services and infrastructure giant Halliburton is a favorite target for critics of former VP Dick Cheney, who used to be the company CEO, the company CEO, during the presidency of George Bush, George W. Bush. The, the company's Iraq war, <laughs> war, related contracts. During the Iraq war, Halliburton had contracts, y'all. Attached wide attention. Now the company's role in the deep water horizon oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico has brought Halliburton back into the headlines. I mean, they got... He left them and went into the political arena as VP, and they gave him $34 million. Uh, have y'all heard that statement about money talks and money does favor? Come on, man. This is, this is why people turn a blind eye to trying to make America great again. This is why people want America gone. Because of right in your face kind of stuff. We can just assume that Halliburton or any other friend of Halliburton start getting government contracts after that. You understand what I'm saying? So if you attach to that, you made a lot of money off of war. You see it says? Companies, Iraq, war. Related contracts. Okay? It's like, hey, you going to leave? Here's some money. Now give me a contract. Allegedly, that's the way people are thinking. Now look at these numbers. He was vice president from 2001 to 2009. The war was going on around that time. Now check out this number. You waiting for this here. Cheney's Halberton made $39.5 billion off that war. Let's do the math. When he left, they gave him $34 million. Here, go buy yourself some Tootsie Rolls. On the way back, bring me a whole McDonald's franchise. In other words, allegedly it's a trade-off. $34 million versus $39.5 billion? Come on, man. I am glad I, I was a reporter then. I was report. I, I didn't want to pull out. I had some things to do tonight. I I I have to pull out those um, 
those articles I did on this back in the day. Because it was a big, big thing back in the day. People were like, this guy about to be vice president? They knew Halliburton was about to make some money, and they did. It was a big, big thing back in the day. But they kept raking it, scooping in the money. $39.5 billion off the war. That's just for Halliburton. Ain't no telling, allegedly, what the other relationships were. Now, check this out. This is why Trump snapped. I'm telling you. I didn't want to keep playing the videos because I was scared he might say something. I want to get in trouble here. But he basically said is that you and your daddy, y'all war hawks. And your daddy made a boatload of money. That's basically what Trump said. Well, guess what? He's accurate. But when he's talked about her being out there at the war and this, that, and, uh, he, he, he crossed the line. <sighs> so here's her birthday. July 28th, 1966. Boy, do I have a surprise for y'all. July 28th, 1966. That's her birthday. Take July 28th and make it 2024. That's her birthday. Just passed. Versus 11-1. Of 2024, which is today, he made the statement. The difference is 96 days. And what is 96? That's April 6th. What is what is 4-6? Well, guess who's the 46th president? Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Biden. You feel me? In fact, let's see. I think I read something today. Let me see. Is Halliburton making money off the Middle East war? According to Wikipedia, while Halliburton's revenues have increased because of its contracts in the Middle East, the overall impact on its bottom line has been mixed. Hmm. Isn't that something? Yeah, they, they still making money, y'all. They still making money. In some way, they making money. It's crazy, right? <laughs> this is this is crazy. But look, so look at the numbers. Now that forty six, you remember what forty six is, right? Forty six is chaos. See, Joe Biden, evidently, you know how he brought chaos. Joe Biden's son. Bo Biden, he he uh, he made it. He uh, he he expired at forty six, so it means death. Uh, George Floyd, George Orwell, they both expired at forty six, and JFK, he became unalive at forty six. So it means that you leave, don't it? That's interesting. Then look at this here. What else I got here? Seven twenty eight. That's her birthday, right? Where's she at? Did I lose her? Yeah, July 28th. Take July 28th, 2024. Subtracted from Donald Trump's birthday, 614, 2024. That just ended. The difference is 44. Come on, man. Who's the 44th president? Barack Obama. Why does it match up like this? I tell y'all, it's the black and white checkerboard, right? I wanted to see something. How far is this from the election day? We have exactly 100 days. Wow, between her birthday and that. That's interesting. 11-5, let me see her birthday here. This is interesting. Trump needs to stop messing with her. Because there was speculation, people. Let me get back on this. There was speculation back in the day. This man, and you know he's still alive. There was speculation being said back in the day. This man was so powerful that even when he left the White House, he, he had so much pull internationally. Trump can't deal with this kind of power. I can't even explain to you guys 
the immensity. I did so much research in the 80s and 90s. I literally should have a master's degree in current political science. And what I can tell you is this man right here, he has so much power, so much power. He came, he came into the international world. We're talking money. You already saw, look, you already saw the kind of money that they was bringing in. This is the kind of stuff that moves uh, dynasties, moves emperors, moves and sets up operations and empires and move presidents in and move them out. Do you understand what I'm saying, you guys? Trump got money. But let me show you something. He ain't got muscle. Put it in the comment section if you understand what I'm trying to say. Trump got money. But he ain't got muscle. Trump is one of them. He has rolled with all the heavyweights back in the day. But not like this. Not like this, baby. It, I'm trying to find the right words here. This is an international stronghold game that through what they do and the influences that they have set up and the allegiance and the, the, the relationships and what's the word? Uh, uh, the, the, the types of relationships that they have internationally. Trump won't know what's going on. He got to be cool with. He got to be cool with his daughter. I'm just keeping it real. You wonder, you wonder why she's been in the headlines? Ever since last few years? Because she come from that type of power. This is the kind of power they don't teach you in school. This is the kind of power that. That when you when you read your history, you'd have to read enough books to say, wow, now I really get it. These are the people that really shaped the world. Trump is trying to incision himself to make change in their world. That's how small Trump is in relation to these people. And I don't want y'all to, to be insulted. And don't think that I'm trying to insult you. I couldn't wait to hurry home and do this video. Because I wanted to break it down just like that. Trump, in relation to people like this man. He's an ant on a hill. These people are, glo when I say globalists, globalists. Trump won't be able to go anywhere internationally and do nothing for this country or get anything done without affecting someone that this guy knows. They don't even call them relationships. I was taught this by, believe it or not, someone whose daddy is a billionaire. And this person taught me years ago that this, these are called alliances. They don't think like commoners. Trump is in their world, although he's been in it 40 some years. But he's not in this type of world. This is a military machine. It goes back to the old saying, you got to be careful what tree you bark. Right? You're barking up the wrong tree. I'm not saying he got to kiss up on her. But he got to be cool. He got to be cool with Miss Liz. He got to be real, real cool with Miss Liz. I'm, look, I'm keeping it. I want y'all to understand because if, if Trump do get up in there, y'all going to have to cool his jets. Because she know what she got. 
He just talked about her, Warhawk, Daddy Warhawk, making all that money. But from my research from the 80s and 90s about this family here and the connections they got, they make and break presidents in any way, form possible. Allegedly. I'm going to just say allegedly. And I hope y'all getting that. And if anybody understand what I'm talking about historically, economically, and business-wise, it can get so personal that they can hurt Trump's business. That's how deep this thing go. So you trying to make America great, and by the time you get out the White House, you got to rebuild what you got. Because they're going because they're gonna have meetings with your contacts. And and, and look, people look, people, I just talk y'all need to talk to this man. Because this is the best way, in my humble opinion, for Trump to become compromised. Christians ain't got the kind of money to stand up to the Halliburtons of the world and their contacts. Do you, and, and their type of alliances. Do you understand what I'm saying? These are dynasty breakers. He keep on talking the way he talked today because it, it, it made me mad that he talked the way he talked about her and what could, and, 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 what, and, and, and what could go down. This was wrong. So in that context, what I'm saying, I'm going to end it now. This was wrong. If this woman feels in any way, form or fashion this could hurt her. They could get him financially before he could even think about repairing America. My name is Franchise Pearson. God bless you and God bless America.